Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, the skull from Gaul. A very strange burial was discovered in France from the days of ancient Gaul. The bodies of the deceased were found lying on their stomachs or hunched over on their sides, which was something highly unusual for the time. People were normally buried much like they are today, laid on their backs in the ground. Even stranger was that some of the heads had been decapitated and buried enclosed by a pair of horse skulls. Archaeologists have no idea what these extremely unusual burials mean. They've suggested it could be a new type of funeral practice never before identified, or it could just be one really odd burial. There are no other examples in all of ancient Gaul of people being buried with their skulls stuck between those of two horses. But one thing the Gauls definitely did do was embalm the heads of their enemies. Ancient Gauls who lived in what is now modern France were extremely brutal warriors. Archaeologists already knew that they cut the heads off their enemies and displayed them as trophies. They would even hang severed heads from the necks of their horses. But after experts found traces of conifer resins on the remains of an Iron Age settlement in the south of France, they had irrefutable proof of the embalming. The Gauls embalmed severed heads with cedar oil to preserve them as trophies for years to come. Warriors filled their houses with preserved human skulls like they were ordinary decorations. Number 9. Reconstructing an Ancient Rib Cage Scientists recently took an ancient rib cage from 60,000 years ago and reconstructed it. And while putting together an old rib cage is obviously pretty creepy, the results of the study were absolutely fascinating. As it turns out, Neanderthals were not hunched savages like previously believed. Instead, the digital reconstruction of the Neanderthal rib cage has shown that the hominids had better posture than modern people. They walked taller and straighter than us, and they even had stronger lungs. This is in stark contrast to the view most people have of Neanderthals. We often picture a more primitive stance, similar to other great apes dragging their knuckles through the dirt. But based on the evidence of the rib cage, that's all completely false. Neanderthals had a spine bent inward, forcing their chest to puff out. It also made them tilt a little bit backwards, resulting in a perfect posture. Dr. Azir Gomez Olivencia from the University of the Basque Country says the Neanderthal spine is located inside the thorax itself, which gave them far more stability. Wonder how they would handle sitting over a computer all day. Number 8. Italian Witch Burial Archaeologists have uncovered the burial of what is believed to be a witch in Italy. We don't know if she really was a witch, but whoever buried her definitely thought so. It was in the town of Albenga where the experts uncovered the skeleton of a teenage girl who had been buried face down in the dirt. Burying a person on their stomach instead of their back was a clear indication in ancient times that they had been rejected by society. But it could also mean they were considered dangerous, maybe even capable of witchcraft. This particular grave was discovered by the Vatican's Pontifical Institute of Christian Archaeology. The burial ground was built sometime around the 5th century, or 1,500 years ago. The alleged witch had been buried with her face in the dirt because of the old belief that when a person died, their soul left their body through the mouth. Burying a person face down would prevent their tainted soul from leaving. This would result in the witch being stuck in a kind of hellish purgatory, with her body deep in the dirt and her soul unable to find release. While barbaric, it certainly was less brutal than the burning death many others accused of witchcraft suffered over the years. Number 7. Hard Labor in Ancient Egypt Archaeologists have found evidence of hard labor and hard times in the bones of the remains found in an ancient Egyptian cemetery. The cemetery is in the city of Amarna, the great capital of the heretic pharaoh Akhenaten. On the outside, the city appears to have been a paradise. Archaeologists have found wall carvings depicting fat oxen, storehouses bursting with grain and fish, and musicians serenading feasts and banquets held by the great pharaoh himself. But new research has shown life was not so great for ordinary people. Researchers analyzed dozens of skeletons from a commoner's cemetery hoping to find some evidence of this shared wealth. What they found instead was malnourished children, adults with broken bodies from a lifetime of hard labor, and the physical evidence of disease and injury. Jerome Rose of the University of Arkansas says the bodies excavated from the Commoner Cemetery are among some of the most disease-ridden and stressed corpses that have ever been found in Egypt. 
these people were miserable. Those in power in ancient Amarna may have been living a life of luxury, but the evidence shows that everyone else back in 1350 BC was doing much more poorly. It's been estimated that about 30,000 people lived at Amarna during its brief 15 years as the capital. While 10% of the population were wealthy elites, the remaining masses were poor peasants. Number 6. Two-Headed Giant A two-headed giant was supposedly discovered in Patagonia back in 1673, named Cap Dois. He stood a whopping 12 feet tall and is currently being held at a museum in Baltimore. To understand this a bit better, we need to go back to the legendary explorer Ferdinand Magellan. When he arrived in Patagonia, he believed it was where giants lived. Everything was huge, the landscape was vast, it only made sense for Patagonia to be inhabited by giants. Then when Magellan and his men went to the beach to explore, they encountered natives of which they claimed were twice as large as any normal man. Of this, they weren't entirely wrong. The indigenous people of Patagonia, specifically the Tehuelche, were taller than average Europeans. It's likely Magellan exaggerated the height difference to get more attention back home. Cap Dois was allegedly found by Spanish sailors on the beaches of Patagonia in 1637. According to the stories, he was captured by the Spanish, brought onto their ship, and they strapped him to the mast. Ultimately, he got free and there was a struggle, leaving the Spaniards with no choice but to kill him with a spike through his chest. They then mummified his body to be taken back to Europe. His body was stuffed, preserved, and paraded around Britain and the United States well into the 19th century. The two-headed giant was the main attraction at freak shows across the country. But just how real is Cap Dois? Well, nobody actually knows, but it is unlikely that a person could grow to be 12 feet tall. The tallest person in recorded history was Robert Wadlow, and even he didn't break 9 feet. Not to mention, Wadlow only had one head. Do you think there was a real two-headed giant living in Patagonia? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Threaded Bone An international team of archaeologists has made a rather creepy discovery in Peru. They looked at 200 examples of human vertebrae that had been threaded onto reed posts from the years 1450 to 1650. This period was the end of the Inca civilization and the beginning of European colonization. Suffice to say, it was a very turbulent time in South American history. There was widespread famine, lots of disease, and frequent desecration of indigenous graves by Europeans. The indigenous people were not very happy about this. Researchers from the University of East Anglia discovered the indigenous peoples came up with a way to reconstruct the dead after being so blatantly disrespected by the Europeans. They threaded vertebrae together on posts in a type of ritual to put their dead ancestors back together. It was sad for the native people who saw their culture, ancestors, and homes utterly destroyed by strangers. To give you a rough idea of just how brutal and ruthless the Spanish were at the time, listen to this. The indigenous population declined from 30,000 heads of household in the year 1533 to less than 980 in 1583, just in the Chinch Valley. In only 50 years, nearly 90% of the indigenous population had been wiped out. The Spanish then took to looting graves, but they didn't just remove the gold and silver treasure, they also broke apart the skeletons of the dead. Number 4. Mass Plague Burial A very rare mass plague burial site has been identified in England. The site was found on the grounds of a monastery hospital from the 14th century in Lincolnshire. Just shy of 50 skeletons have been excavated by professional archaeologists with the University of Sheffield. The skeletons, most of which were found to be children, all died directly because of the Black Death. We've all heard of the plague before, but here's a quick recap on just how terrible it was. From between 1346 and 1353, somewhere between 75 and 200 million people in Europe were killed by the disease. It was the worst pandemic ever recorded in human history. Many local communities found themselves completely overwhelmed when the Black Death swept through town. It often killed so many people that it would turn entire villages into ghost towns. Here in Lincolnshire, that's probably what happened. 27 children and 21 adults died at almost the exact same time, forcing those who remained to bury their dead in a mass grave. Number 3. 
drowned fishermen. In a mass grave on the other side of the world, researchers from the University of Southampton discovered the skeleton of a fisherman who died 5,000 years ago. The discovery was made near the coast of northern Chile, and it's honestly pretty incredible. This is how much information archaeologists can get from nothing but a few bones. They were able to identify the fisherman as being between 35 and 45 at the time of death. The condition of his bones showed that he had rowed a boat frequently, used a harpoon, and probably harvested shellfish. Researchers also found microscopic marine particles present in his bones. These particles include fossilized algae and parasitic eggs. They also found sediment and diatoms, which suggests the man drowned in very shallow seawater. By putting all these clues together, archaeologists have been able to paint a picture of his last moments in life. They believe the fisherman suffered some kind of accident while harvesting shellfish just a few feet from the beach. He drowned in the shallow water, was brought back to land, and then buried at the local Neolithic cemetery. Did you know that scientists could get this much information about a person's life just from a simple bone fragment? Let me know in the comments! Number 2. Ancient Child Mummies Inside an ancient tomb near Lima in Peru, archaeologists uncovered six mummified children. Their tiny skeletons were found wrapped in cloth inside the grave of one man. The experts believe these kids were sacrificed so that they could accompany the dead man into the afterlife. He was some kind of noble, perhaps a highly respected political figure. Nobody has been able to figure out his name, so his identity is still a mystery. What we do know is that the six children were likely killed for no other reason than to join the mystery man in the next life. What researchers are working on now is trying to figure out why. Why would a man need six children to accompany him to the netherworld? Archaeologist Peter Van Dalen says the children may have been close relatives. They were discovered placed at the entrance of his tomb, each one stacked on the other. Perhaps they were his relatives. They could also be a sacrifice, or their bodies were present for some completely unknown reason. Either way, this is one of the creepiest archaeological discoveries ever made in Peru. Number 1. The Monk in the Buddha A Buddha statue made 1,000 years ago in China was on loan to the Drents Museum in the Netherlands. Researchers at the museum were excited to have the statue and were curious to see what was inside of it. They knew there was something there, they just didn't know what. So they took it to the Meander Medical Center in the town of Amersfoort. Here, the statue was put through a medical examination. CT scans revealed a human body was actually inside the statue. It turned out the statue was holding the mummified remains of a Buddhist monk sitting in the lotus position. The discovery was pretty mind-blowing. The archaeologists then extracted bone material for DNA testing and biological samples from the mummy's chest. What they found was that the mummy had their organs removed and replaced with pieces of paper somewhat similar to other ancient mummification rituals. However, there are some theories as to who the Buddhist monk was. He may have been Master Lui Chuan from the Chinese Meditation School. He died in the year 1100 and likely had himself turned into a living Buddha through the process of self-mummification. He would have starved himself, ate nothing but herbs and seeds to stop bacterial growth when his body died, and drank poisonous tree sap to keep the insects out of his corpse. After years of this, he had himself put inside of a statue and then starved to death, becoming a living Buddha. Thanks for watching! Which of these bizarre discoveries creeped you out the most? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!